Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for March 12th, 2024. Now, of course, as we mentioned in our previous video, severe weather season is starting to come along just fine and dandy. And of course, we got some more severe weather setups to talk about. Make sure you hit that like button down below if you want to help us spread this out to more and more people. And with that being said, we'll talk a little bit about what's supposed to happen today. There is a one out of five on the severe weather scale here in the dark green. Really, this is just kind of an appetizer for the following two days. So if you are in these areas, watch out for some marginal level severe thunderstorms. Now we'll talk about Wednesday, March 13th here. We do have a two out of five on the severe weather scale here for portions of northeastern Kansas, central to northwestern Missouri, and southeastern Nebraska. This is mainly going to be induced due to the tornado risk that is possible. You can see areas near Kansas City, St. Joseph, Topeka, and just that general border of Kansas and Missouri is really where there could potentially be the threat for tornadoes. And of course, we could also be talking about some significant severe hail that could be accompanied by that general risk. And once we transition from Wednesday into Thursday, we also have more showers and thunderstorms that are likely to become severe. Now keep in mind that both the placement and the intensity of this severe weather event is likely to change. So as we get closer and closer, please do keep in mind that basically anything could potentially be possible. So now we're gonna transition into the models. We're gonna have our upper level shear, which signifies divergence. And then we have our surface pressure here, which can indicate convergence. And uh, more than anything, we're gonna be talking about what came first, the chicken or the egg. In this instance, what came first is the divergence. And then as you have strong divergence aloft, that can result into more convergence, which lowers surface pressure. So as we watch through here, we have a little bit of a little miniature shortwave trough that's gonna move on through. That is going to cause our severe weather here for today. But as we move into tomorrow or Wednesday, we're gonna have a bit of divergence aloft here, which can indicate some more convergence towards the surface, especially on the tip of this uh, trough. You see how the wind shear starts to kind of decrease a little bit once you get away from the main core of the intensities. This is where you start to see a lot of your strong upper level divergence. And that strong upper level divergence then results into an intensifying low pressure system, especially if you didn't have a whole lot of convergence there to begin with. Now, as we go from Wednesday into Thursday, you can see that our low actually starts to shift a little bit further off towards the north and east, which means that we also continue to still have the system. But by the time we get done with Thursday, we can start to see that low doesn't really uh, exist anymore. Friday, it's gonna start to be a little bit more tame. And with surface convergence from low pressure systems, we are going to need likely some moisture in order for some strong thunderstorms to try and form. So we have surface dew points over here in this graphic, and we have about one kilometer above ground level, we have our 850 millibar relative humidity. Why that is important is because this can help us be introduced to the idea of where dry air is present to help us figure out how strong these wildfires actually could be. And this can also help us identify some areas of limiting factors in our thunderstorm environment. So let's play it on here. Let's see how this progresses from today into tomorrow. And you can see on the moisture map, we have a lot of dew points that are starting to rise up into the central plains. We have a pretty large open warm sector of about upper 50s to low 60s in regards to dew points. And what we have here on Wednesday night is we have a pretty well established dry line here where we have a lot of moisture on one side, especially some very rich dew points across portions from Oklahoma, Arkansas, and further down to the south. And we have a lot of very dry dew points in back behind that. And that's the reason why there is such a significant risk for wildfires tomorrow is because a lot of these dew points are over into the 20s and even teens. So very dry conditions, very strong winds, especially near the low pressure system that usually doesn't spell great news, especially if you don't want wildfires. So something to watch with that. But the other thing to watch here is Notice on the moist side of the dry line, especially into Oklahoma and Kansas, our relative humidity is not nearly near 
the 100% general vicinity. It's not even near 90 or 80%. It's actually near the 50 to 60% general area of relative humidity. And that means it's not exactly dry, but it's not exactly moist either. And when you start to add in a bit of a dry component, especially if that is usually accompanied by some warmer air aloft, that can be a bit of a limiting factor in the atmosphere to actually prevent showers and thunderstorms. And if we shift from Wednesday into Thursday, then of course we can see that we do once again still have a very large area of where moisture is in abundance. Very rich, warm moisture there. And we even have a lot of pretty high values of relative humidity across the board, even in those same areas as well. So Thursday may actually be a little bit more significant than Wednesday. Now, one thing I will say about Wednesday is, well, where are thunderstorms going to be and why is it mainly favored up into northeastern Kansas and northwestern Missouri? Well. We take a look at our vorticity here, especially at the 850 millibar level once again, so about one kilometer above ground level, and we can see there's our nice little low pressure system, right? It moves on through, and for today, we have these little areas, these little pockets of vorticity into which thunderstorms are likely to be near. And as that passes on through, you can notice that that is near where the area of severe weather is expected to happen today. So what happens if we go to tomorrow? What happens if we go to Wednesday? Well, we have our low pressure system starting to form here again, but we don't really have any real areas of concentrated vorticity, especially if our dry line is supposed to be right here until we start to have our warm front start to develop a little bit more. Notice if we go back a little bit more in time, there's not really a whole lot, maybe a little bit of vorticity out in front, but not enough to really spark a whole lot of thunderstorm activity, similar to the day before in central Missouri. So if we move on through, we take this in towards the evening hours, and you can see there is quite a lot of vorticity over in northeastern Kansas, and maybe even a little bit here in southern Kansas too. So just something to watch out for, especially if we have some extreme high values of vorticity over here along the warm front, this can actually indicate as to where some significant severe weather could be located. Now, one of the reasons why I said that Thursday is likely to change in regards to that graphic is because if we remember how far north that actually took it, we were apparently supposed to be seeing some severe weather over here in Iowa and in Illinois. But what actually is right here is this is our warm front and anything north of the warm front would likely allow elevated showers and thunderstorms, meaning the tornado threat would likely be near zero, but not exactly zero. It'll just be relatively low. But anything below this warm front over here in the open warm sector is likely where we can see some severe weather. And notice here, we see how we have some of these little lines and some of these localized areas of higher vorticity. This is where we could potentially see our stronger severe weather. And so depending upon how sporadic this is south of the warm front, this can likely determine as to where our significant severe weather could be located. And we wanna be able to try and indicate areas of where moisture convergence is, so we can try and figure out where those thunderstorms are most likely to try and form. Now, theta E isn't exactly moisture convergence, but this basically tells us as to where a lot of our really pristine areas of actual temperature could likely be located. And so, as we move this through here at about 23Z and 0Z, which is the late afternoon into the early evening here, we can see that we have some, but we don't really have a whole lot. We have some moisture convergence in this area, but it's not terribly in abundance. And because of that, we don't really see a whole lot of activity over here in the portions of southeastern Kansas. However, there are some areas that we could watch out for this area over here in northeastern Kansas, as well as this area down here in southern Oklahoma. This is uh, two areas, I would say, that I would really watch out for in regards to where severe weather could be located. And then as we move this over into Thursday, you can see we have a lot more moisture convergence here, and it is in abundance. So this is definitely gonna be something to watch out for. And the other thing that I also want to make a note of is depending upon where the surface winds are coming from. Uh, for instance, 
we have a lot of these winds here in southern Missouri, these winds coming from the south. We have these winds down here in southern Arkansas coming from the south and east. If we have a lot of these winds that are coming from the south or the south and east, the tornadic environment is going to be pretty ripe in those areas, especially since our wind shear aloft is going to be moving from the southwest to the north and east. Whereas if we have a lot of these other areas here, these other winds that are parallel to our upper level winds, usually that doesn't indicate a whole lot of vorticity. And we need that really for tornadic weather. So one thing to keep in mind is one area could be more probable of seeing tornadic weather than another. And that's the reason why I said, please keep an eye out on Thursday for things to potentially change. So let's take you down the yellow brick road, if you will, and let's take a look and see what the potential simulated radar is for Wednesday. And notice sometime here around 9 Eastern, 8 Central, we have some thunderstorms that start to form over here near Topeka. And that's the reason why we do have the risk for severe weather over there. And that continues to increase in activity, especially as you get further and further into the overnight hours. Now notice, as of right now, it doesn't say any showers and thunderstorms form along this boundary that extends from Kansas into Oklahoma. And as of right now, that's a good thing, of course, but we're going to want to continue to monitor it because there is the potential for maybe a couple thunderstorms to try and form along that axis. So don't be surprised, especially since the Storm Prediction Center even highlighted that there is a small chance for severe weather along that particular area. But as we continue from Wednesday into Thursday, notice that our warm front continues to build and it continues to kind of act as a pretty strong barrier for practically where our moisture actually goes up to. It extends all the way up to this area, but nothing further north. So anything that is really below the border of Iowa and Missouri is really where we could potentially see some severe weather as of this model run. And one thing that I believe we should also note is that you see these little stripes that are over here in northeastern Texas. These are convergence bands, and a lot of these areas here of convergence can actually uh, create showers and thunderstorms. And as we mentioned, down here near areas in Arkansas, this is where severe weather and uh, tornadic conditions could quite possibly be at its ripest. And so if we have a lot of these convergence bands, we can probably see quite a few showers and thunderstorms. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Please be sure to be weather aware over the next few days. But up until then, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media. Also follow me on social media. I'll continue to monitor these weather events to the best of my ability. And who knows, we might be able to get a few live streams out for you all. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.